deep range and speak his name in whispers. In the first half of this episode, you'll recall that Dr. Strange was overcome and cast into limbo by Dormammu, ruler of the Dark Dimension. Alone and unaided and seemingly helpless to prevent Dormammu from invading the domain of men, the master of the mystic arts considers his predicament and the fate of the world should he fail to defeat this awesome enemy. <sighs> Never since the accident have I felt so helpless, so unprepared. Nothing in my training has given me the power to understand, let alone to defeat such an adept as this Dormammu. And the amulet seems almost to potentiate his spells. What was it the Ancient One said? In the end, you will need more than I have taught you. There must be a way. But even as Doctor Strange floats in helpless contemplation, the ether before him begins to coalesce and a woman of noble bearing appears to the magician. Heed my words, man from another world. You must not battle Dormammu. You waste your breath. Nothing can prevent this from happening. I don't fear death in the service of the men of my world. In fact, I have come to expect it. But why do you seek to aid me? Do not misunderstand me, sorcerer. I fear your victory more than your defeat. I watched your duel with the dreaded one. You were already tired when you met him, yet no one in this dimension has ever taxed his powers as you did. I am thinking that if by some miracle you managed to defeat Dormammu, it could mean the end of us. Us? Of whom are you speaking? Who are you? I am called Clea, one of Dormammu's myriad slaves. I speak for others like myself. I'm afraid I don't understand. Then you must be shown. Prepare yourself for such sights as have never before been witnessed by human eyes. With a mere gesture, the woman causes the random shimmerings of the void to converge, forming images and sounds of another place. This is only the start of the eerie spectacle you are about to behold. These are the outskirts of Dormammu's domain, where the mindless ones dwell. The mindless ones? Yes. See there, beyond. They are primitive, savage, totally deprived of intelligence or the finer sentiments of kindness and love. They seem to have quite highly developed powers. Do they not destroy each other with their energy bolts? No, for to do so, they would only destroy what seeks to destroy in turn. They have lived in this dimension since time immemorial, always striving to kill us and to ruin all that we cherish. Look out! They have seen us. I must destroy the image. Only one thing contains them. A psychic barrier maintained by Dormammu encircling his entire domain. Without this, he would have no slaves, no land worth ruling. So while Dormammu is a menace to mankind, he is nonetheless a protector to his own people. You speak of saving the men of your world. But in what way are they different from the men of Dormammu's? That is why you must not defeat him, mortal. Only Dormammu can save us from the mindless ones. Meanwhile, in another dimension, distant only by a fault in the layers of time, other men consider the outcome of the titanic duel which is about to take place between Doctor Strange and the dread Dormammu. <laughs> and yet, all things considered, it doesn't seem to me that this news is to be laughed at, Mordo. Miss Strange is indeed a fool. He has no knowledge of such power as Dormammu wields. Through his stupidity, I may yet defeat the Ancient One and... It is good that you have come and told me this, my friend. But do not fear. Return to your world and observe what transpires. Do not fail to give my fondest respects to your lord. I will do so at once. 
And for this service, you will grant me refuge in this world should the sorcerer defeat Dormammu? Of course. But it is as I have told you. This meddler is not as powerful as you fear. He has only eluded me by the most phenomenal luck and the use of his amulet. But you say this serves him little against the dreaded one. At least it appeared to be the case as they fought. Very well then, I shall do as you bid. <laughs> Another fool loose in the ether. Dormammu will surely win, and Earth will be his. Yet he will need a governor. I shall rule Earth yet, and more if all goes well. Unaware of Mordo's plan, Doctor Strange still lies captive in the void of the Dark Dimension. Alone once again, he considers the appeal made by Clea and the outcome of the final confrontation with Dormammu. To save both worlds, I would have to defeat Dormammu and then recreate the barrier. It's absurd. I could never control that much energy, even if I could find its source. Besides, I will need all of my strength to defeat Dormammu. And this much must be done. Hardly has the magician spoken these words when his body is hurtled through space by the force of an unsuspected spell. convince me not to fight. What could be wrong with this? Silence. I promised you a reprieve, sorcerer. But your conspiracy has angered me beyond all measure. You will both die. But which of you die first, and which will have to witness the monstrous death. Namo Vakam, Rumo Nayana, Ramini Yaya Parayos. What is this? Doctor Strange has taken the offensive, rolling one spell after another. Dormammu is temporarily surprised by so sudden acceleration of the sequence of anticipated events, and he counters wildly, initially missing the magician. May the fire of Agni release her from your spell. Ah. <laughs> your fatal mistake, mortal. I have to been told of your self-effacing oath. But by my power, the spell will hold and you will die. Calling upon ever greater spells, Dormammu begins to close upon his opponent. And the deadly vortices of power strike further and further into his defenses. Then, in apparent desperation, Doctor Strange attempts a ruse. Observe, Dormammu. You attack a mere projection. I am here behind you. Skillful, but useless. I can see that you are neither of these visions, but their common reflection in the air. Useless. I have powers enough to wither them all. But unknown to Dormammu, while Doctor Strange draws more and more of his energy, the psychic barrier surrounding the Dark Domain has begun to weaken. The mindless ones rapidly sense the vulnerability of the once protected realm. With great speed, they begin to pour into the center of the Domain, destroying all in their path, until finally their rampage comes to the attention of their preoccupied overlord. 
the mindless ones are free. Hold mortal, other lives than yours are at stake. Surely you will grant such a truce. I shall take no advantage of you during this period. May the rings of Ragador contain you. the eye of the amulet. May its power be one with that of Dormammu. Strengthened by the mystic power of the amulet, Dormammu's spell becomes more and more effective until at last the mindless ones are held and forced back. The spell holds. The barrier is complete. But you, sorcerer, you have presumed a great deal. I curse the fact that I needed your help. I curse the fate that has placed me in your debt. Everyone has his weaknesses, Dormammu. I suspected all along that your pride would force you to honor such a debt. What will you have, vile carrion? Wealth, power, Perhaps this woman... The woman's well. freedom and safety. And a promise, dreaded one. You must vow never to enter the dimension of Earth. Ever. Oh, so be it. But I shall never rest until I have avenged this indignity. Never. <laughs> A short time later, high in the mountains of Tibet, Doctor Strange confers once again with his aged master. So if this is correct, Guruji, Mordo has already signed such a pact with the dreaded one? This is what I fear, my child. And so once again you must not take the rest you so desire. But for greater deeds you will need greater powers, and you have earned them. I give you my cloak of levitation. Fly cloak. I pray I may be found My worthy pupil, of this. My you have already been found worthy. Now go, for I must meditate. May the Vishanti protect you, my Chela. And so the shadow of the magician darts across the globe while ordinary men, ignorant of the danger averted, go about their affairs. Be with us again next time for more of the occult adventures of Doctor Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts. about wraps it up for tonight. This is likely to be our last show in monaural sound. I'm sure you'll want to catch some of these effects in stereo. So don't forget to tune in again in two weeks when Dr. Strange will hopefully go to Hong Kong. And if he does, we'll see you there. The radio is produced by Charles Potter with technical effects by David Rapkin. In the cast tonight, you heard Archie Altman, Martin Gleitzman, Beth Latimer, Gene Moore, Charles Potter, David Wilson, and yours truly, John Basis. Thanks for letting us into your living room. Good night. This is Stan Lee, and you're listening to Nuff Said on good old WBAI New York.